Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together looking at November 2022 um, paper 2 that is on chemistry. So if you haven't subscribed please just make sure you're part of the family and uh, of course you can also be a member all right so where you can actually benefit from our valuable perks. Uh, so see the membership uh, um, uh, button so that you can see what our offerings are. Right, let's jump right into the multiple choice section and we will continue with the rest of the other sections as the week goes by. All right, let's go. So the first question um, they say to us, which one of the following statements, um, rather which one of the following terms rather describes the hydrocarbons that contain only single bonds. All right, so we are talking about in this case uh, alkanes. So uh, in this case, we say that they are saturated hydrocarbons, right? So we know that B would be our answer for this one. Right, the next question they say which one of the following combination correctly indicates uh, the strongest intermolecular forces found in ethanoic acid as well as methyl propanoate, respectively? Right, so for ethanoic acid, we know that the strongest intermolecular forces there uh, would be the hydrogen bonds, isn't it? Um, whereas for methyl propanoate, um, the strongest intermolecular forces would be the dipole dipole forces. So the correct uh, combination there would be D. And of course, if you do not know that, you just need to go and watch uh, my videos. On organic chemistry, you can look at the organic chemistry playlist, all right, immediately after this, okay? Right, now let's go to number three. They say a test tube contains liquid hydro, a liquid hydrocarbon, right? They say when, when bromine water is added to the test tube, the mixture decolorizes, okay, immediately. Note that what causes decolorization is the reaction with the bromine water. Usually bromine water is brown in color, right? So if it decolorizes, then it means that we've reacted with an alkene. Please keep that in mind, right? And it would undergo an addition reaction, right? So in this case, you know that you've got at least something that has um, at least one double bond in this case. And what happens is that we will break that uh, pi bond and we will form uh, hello alkane in this case so it would be an addition reaction so the correct combination i'd say it's hex 2 in and it would be an addition reaction so i would take c as my correct answer there right the next question they say which one of the uh, following statements is the correct definition for the rate of a reaction Right, let's look at the first one. They say the time taken for the reaction to take place. Mm, not really the best. Okay, they say the speed at which the reaction takes place. Yeah, but um, not exactly the best as well. They say the rate of change in concentration of the products of, uh, of the products or reactants, right? Uh, I would definitely go with C. Whenever you use the word rate, it means division by time. And remember uh, that the rate of reaction in this case, that's going to be the change in the concentration. You can uh, say this is the uh, change in concentration uh, divided by time, right? So whenever you use rate, that's division by time. Um, so C looks like the correct one, but let's look at D. They say the rate of change in concentration of products or reactants per unit time. Now, uh, D uh, almost looks correct, but the problem is that they used a rate of change as well as per unit time. That's a, um, you know, that, that's what we would call, um, uh, you know, it's repeating the same thing twice, right? Uh, I forgot what they call that in English. Um, uh, so uh, they said rate of change and they said per unit time. So either you can say it's the concentration of the products of the reactants uh, or products per I mean of the products per unit time or you, I mean the change in concentration rather of products per unit time or you can say in this case the rate of the change uh, of products. So C would definitely be the correct one. 
Okay, right, let's go on to the next question. They say consider the balanced equation for the reaction between magnesium powder and excess dilute hydrochloric acid, right? Now we say which one of the following will not increase the rate of the reaction? Well, they say increasing the volume of hydrochloric acid I would definitely pounce on A as my correct answer, right? It will not change the rate of the reaction, right? But let's look at the others. The increase in temperature, definitely temperature increases the rate of reaction. Increase in concentration of hydrochloric acid, definitely it would. And adding more magnesium powder, of course, uh, in this case, that would definitely increase the rate of reaction. So as a result, it means that A is the one that will not increase the rate of reaction. Right. All right. And moving on to 1.6. So they say two identical uh, sealed jars, R and S, contain gases as shown below. So we start with one mole of hydrogen, one mole of iodine as well as uh, uh, on the other gas jar S, we've got two moles of hydrogen iodide, right? They say equilibrium is reached in both gas jars at 500 degrees uh, Celsius, according to the following uh, balanced equations, right? Now, they say with which one of the following statements is true at equilibrium, right? So um, the first uh, option, they say S will contain one mole of iodine. Look, we, we're not able to tell how much we will have uh, in each gas jar, but we do know that conditions are, are the same in both jars, right? So they say uh, R will contain a larger amount of uh, uh, iodine than in S. Remember, in this case, because you're dealing with the same reaction, right? At equilibrium, what happens? The rate of the forward reaction should be equal to the rate of the reverse reaction for both equations, for both reactions, right? Whether we are looking at the forward reaction or the reverse reaction. Uh, so in that case, uh, statement B would not necessarily be true. Uh, they say R and S will contain the same amount of hydrogen iodide. And I would actually think that is true. And the reason for that, ladies and gents, is that uh, you would actually have Remember, the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction and the conditions, right, under which both reactions are taking place, uh, right, are exactly the same. So I would tend to go with C, right, uh, because both conditions are the same. Right, now let's go on to 1.7. They say which one of the following salts when dissolved in water, will not change the pH of water, right? Um, in this case, I want you to note what would not change the pH of water would be a neutral salt. So it would be a salt that is made up of a strong acid, right? A salt that comes from an, a strong acid as, as well as a strong base, right? So if you think about sodium carbonate, its uh, origin in this case, of course, comes from sodium hydroxide, and this one comes from carbonic acid, right? H2CO3, right? That's a, a weak, I mean, a strong base and a weak acid, right? If you think about uh, sodium oxalate, which is this guy here, uh, it comes from oxalic acid, which is a weak acid, and sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, right? So that would form a basic salt, okay? Just like it would for A as well, it would be a basic salt. Ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride comes from ammonia and hydrochloric acid. Ammonia is a weak base and hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So you would end up uh, with a, an acidic salt. So that would not give us a pH of 7. But if you look at sodium chloride, in this case, it comes from sodium hydroxide, right, as well as hydrochloric acid. So in this case, uh, both strong uh, acid and strong base. So this would be a neutral salt. So as a result, uh, D would be the option that I go for. It will not change the pH of water. Okay, right. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right, as we move along to the next question, they say uh, a dilute acid is titrated against potassium hydroxide solution, right? 
uh, they said the equivalent point, the pH is 7, right? So note, we, we took a strong base in this case, right? So that means for us to end up with a pH of 7, we need a strong acid, right? And um, of those strong acids that, I mean, of the acids that I see there, hydrochloric acid would be a strong acid. So we're looking at answers between, uh, oh, they said which one of the following rather combination correctly identifies the acid and the most suitable indicator of this titration, right? So now, uh, one thing that I want you to remember, ladies and gents, you know, um, when it comes to indicators, uh, just a quick reminder, right? Whenever you are looking at, um, you know, the result of an acidic salt, okay? So if you take a strong acid and a weak base, so if let's say acid uh, plus base, okay, uh, which will give us a salt, okay? So if you take a strong acid and a weak base, right? What you end up with is that, um, you know, if your acid is strong, this would be an acidic salt, okay? So it means that the pH would be less than zero. I mean, uh, less than seven rather, okay? So you're looking at a pH range there, which is somewhat acidic. So the most fitting uh, uh, indicator to use uh, would be actually methyl orange, okay? Uh, you must keep that in mind, okay? Uh, methyl orange usually has a range around uh, 3.1 to about 4.4, okay? Uh, so this you would use when you've got a an acidic salt, okay? Now, if you take a strong, uh, let's say a weak acid and a strong base, in this case, of course, you would end up with the basic salt, isn't it? Um, so in this case, uh, the the you know the perfect indicator to use there uh, would actually be uh, phenolphthalein, right? Uh, that would be um, phenolphthalein. Okay, yeah, it's a bit of a uh, quite some writing to do. So phenolphthalein in this case would measure around, you know, uh, 8.3 to around 10. Um, so if you've got a basic salt, uh, phenolphthalein would be the perfect one. But if you take a strong acid and a strong base, what you end up with is a neutral salt. Please remember that, right? Uh, so with a neutral salt, uh, in this case, the perfect one would be a bromothymal blue, okay? So if you take bromothymal blue, uh, um, in this case, which usually turns blue when it becomes uh, a neutral, um, so you are looking at a pH range of, of about 6.0 to about 7.6, right? This would be the uh, pH range. So um, just to answer that question, all right, uh, I went through all of that just to try and remind you about your indicators. So, of course, you can see which one would be your perfect answer. Your perfect answer in this case would be D. Okay, we are looking for a pH of uh, 7. So, bromothymol blue would be the one that is conducive. Right, now let's go on to the next question. Now, they say to us, which one of the following statements uh, is true for an oxidizing agent? So, please, I want you to remember that. Right, so an oxidizing agent, remember, is uh, undergoes reduction. And what is reduction? It's the gain of electrons, right? So uh, they say uh, A says it gains electrons. I would tend to go with A, but let's look at why the others cannot be true. Uh, it says it causes another species uh, uh, in the reaction to be reduced. That's not true, right? If it's an oxidizing agent... Okay, it means it makes oxidation takes place, so it causes the other uh, species to be oxidized. Okay, uh, they say its oxidation number does not change. That's not true. It should definitely change um, uh, in that case. So uh, they say its oxidation number increases during a chemical reaction. Uh, remember, once we say it undergoes reduction, uh, it means that its oxidation number is actually uh, reduced. So uh, that would not be true. Okay, right. And finally, they say which one of the metals 
will reduce uh, that's cadmium ion okay cadmium two plus ions uh, to cadmium all right uh, but will not reduce uh, manganese um, uh, yeah the manganese ion uh, to manganese all right now i what i did there was to go and look at our standard reduction potential uh, um, uh, you know uh, table so first of all we wanted to reduce mang uh, cadmium right so uh, i'm going to try and identify cadmium there right so if you look at this there is cadmium over there right so we want something that is going to reduce uh, um, cadmium right so it means that we want something that has a that is a stronger reducing agent uh, than cadmium so it must be below so that uh, in this case it would cause uh, cadmium to be reduced right so it must be actually a stronger reducing agent uh, in that case right so but they said it will not be able to reduce manganese so in this case we want something that will be above manganese right um but it must be below cadmium so we want it to have a stronger to be a stronger reducing agent right than cadmium but to be a weaker reducing agent uh, uh, than um uh, in this case manganese right so if we look at that the options that we have uh, zinc right so let's look at zinc if it fits it definitely does look at this ladies and gents right it's a stronger reducing agent there's zinc over there it's below cadmium right uh, but it is above manganese so i would actually say that's our answer okay but let's look at the others right uh, if we look at silver, for instance, uh, silver, there is silver all the way up there. Uh, so it's a much weaker reducing agent. So it will not actually uh, reduce uh, cadmium, nor will it reduce uh, manganese. So uh, silver would not be an option. Uh, nickel, all right. So nickel also uh, is there above. So in this case, uh, nickel would not be an option. And finally, if we look at uh, magnesium, uh, so if you look at magnesium, it's actually a much stronger uh, reducing agent than both manganese as well as cadmium. So it will actually cause both to be reduced. So um, in this case, we wanted to reduce the one and not the other. So in this case, the perfect uh, answer there should be zinc. Okay, right. So I hope that you were able to follow on and understand uh, um, I will be publishing obviously the other questions as well right look out for them I hope that uh, you understood this otherwise ladies and gents I'll see you next time and uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like and please tell as many people as possible about our channel otherwise your uncle will see you next time sharp sharp